The brain is the most complex organ in the human body, processing every thought, action, and feeling. It houses a network of billions of individual nerve cells called neurons, cells that make up the entire nervous system. While each individual neuron is too small to see with the naked eye, don't let their size fool you. Together, they form giant neural networks that allow communication between the brain and other parts of the human body. As you walk, talk, feel, or listen, neurons put on a magical display, an electrical firestorm of activity to help make meaning in the world. In this second EM episode, I cover neuroanatomy, the parts, function, and communication of a neuron. What parts make up the neuron? Each individual neuron is made up of different parts. The dendrites are branch-like extensions that receive chemical messages or neurotransmitters from other neurons. The chemical messages fit into receptor sites located on each dendrite, like a key fits into a lock to relay a specific message. The soma, or cell body, contains the nucleus. The soma controls all functions of the cell, helping it sustain life. The axon is a tube-like structure that conducts electrical impulses, called an action potential, away from the soma. The axon helps transmit information to different neurons. The axon is surrounded by a fatty white substance, called the myelin sheath, that both protects the axon and speeds nerve impulses to our muscles and organs. Think of the copper cable in this photo as the axon, sending the electrical message, and the gray rubber covering is the myelin sheath, insulating the structure. In our peripheral nervous system, myelin are produced by Schwann cells. Schwann cells wrap around sensory and motor neurons to form the myelin. Myelin sheath is vital for the nervous system to function properly, particularly the central nervous system. Any damage can interfere with nerve communication. This is the primary cause of multiple sclerosis. The immune system begins to attack the myelin, disrupting communication through the body. The small gaps between each myelin are called myelin sheath gaps, or nodes of Ranvier where the axon is uncovered. These gaps help relay the electrical impulse down the axon. Located at the end of the neuron are the terminal branches, or synaptic knobs. These structures hold small sacs called vesicles that contain neurotransmitters. Once the electrical impulse reaches the terminal buttons, neurotransmitters are released into the synapse and linked to other neurons. Surrounding individual neurons in the central and peripheral nervous system are glial cells, which serve many functions, including protection, insulation, and supplying neurons with nutrients. Interestingly, research suggests that nearly 90% of the brain is composed of glial cells, not neurons. Before we move on, check your understanding of the parts of a neuron. Identify each part of a neuron using the terms above. Pause the video here and begin to match. Check your answers and review before moving on. How do neurons communicate? Even though there are billions, if not trillions of individual neurons in the human body, none actually touch each other. There is a tiny microscopic space between them called the synapse or synaptic cleft. Think of the chemical message as this runner and the synapse as this gap. The neuron that releases the chemical message is often referred to as the presynaptic neuron, and the neuron that receives the new message is called the postsynaptic neuron. Neurons communicate with each other at this junction when chemical messages are released by one neuron and bind to receptor sites on the next neuron. Some of the chemical messages that get released into the synapse get reabsorbed by the original neuron in a process called reuptake. Antidepressants, like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, increase the level of serotonin in the brain and block the reuptake process, thus making serotonin more available. But how does a neuron actually fire? The firing of a neuron is an electrochemical process. Simply, electricity travels within a cell, while chemicals travel between cells. Let's examine this process step by step from the beginning. Before a neuron sends a signal, it's in a resting state, and the cell is considered polarized. This means the neuron is negatively charged on the inside and positively charged on the outside. Think of two sides of a battery with different charges. The different electrical charge inside and outside the cell is because the number of sodium ions outside the cell membrane is greater than the number of potassium ions inside. When neurotransmitters are released into the synapse and bind to receptor sites on the receiving postsynaptic neuron, it creates an electrical charge called an action potential. An action potential will generate when a neuron has reached a certain level of stimulation or threshold. 
Neurons either reach a threshold and fire, or they don't. There is no in-between. This is called all or none principle. Once the information has reached the axon, an electrical charge travels down the axon, and sodium channels or gates open up in the cell membrane, causing positively charged sodium ions to rush in. With the flood of positive ions moving inside the cell, the neuron becomes depolarized because the electrical charge has switched. The neuron is now positively charged on the inside. Within milliseconds, the sodium channels then close and potassium channels open. Potassium ions are pumped outside the cell membrane. With these channels open, the neuron begins to repolarize back to the resting potential. However, before the neuron returns to a resting state, it enters a refractory period. A new action potential cannot fire until it recharges and returns to a polarized state. Think of a toilet that cannot flush twice in a row because the water needs to fill up again. In the resting state, the neuron returns to a negative charge. Sodium ions move back outside the cell membrane and potassium ions rush back inside. This back and forth dance of negative and positive ions rushing in and out and sodium potassium gates opening and closing continues with every thought and action. Lastly, check your understanding of how neurons communicate and fire. Fill in the blanks to make this statement accurate. Pause the video here before checking your answers. If you had any trouble filling the blanks, rewind the video and continue to review.